Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to our meeting tonight on growth mindset. Um, this is being presented by the Salt Lake Family to Family Network. The Family to Family Network is a statewide parent support network run by volunteers. It is designed to educate, strengthen, and support families of persons with disabilities, especially those who are on the waiting list or, in, or are in services with the Division of Services for People with Disabilities. Network leaders are parents of individuals with special needs and link families to local resources, services, and disability-friendly events. The Family to Family Network is a project of the Utah Parent Center. Um, I'd like to turn the time over to our speaker to go ahead and get started. Thank you very much, um, Mandy. I am really excited to be here tonight to teach about a um, growth mindset for a successful future. And I want to thank everyone attending for your interest in this topic. Um, I hope that you enjoy it and take a lot of tools uh, with you today. Um, my name is Lilian Janos, and this is not me actually. <laughs> I just realized I didn't change my, uh, the picture. I usually share one with my son. My son is Miguel Angel and has 10 years old and he has Down syndrome. And he's the reason that I am now connected with the Utah Parent Center. I'm part of their team and also uh, part of the family to family and network. Um, I am excited to present this information to you because it is great information for our children and ourselves as adults as well. So we're gonna begin watching this short video where Mocho discovers a secret about his brain. Chapter one, Mojo discovers a secret about his brain. A secret that will change the way he looks at the world forever. Our story begins with Mojo, a friendly monster who loved school, especially math. Until one day when something terrible happened, the math problems got harder. Nothing made sense anymore. Mojo had a devastating thought. He just wasn't smart enough for school. It seemed the only reasonable thing to do was pack his things and leave forever. Just then, he heard his friend Katie laughing. Mojo, you can't just give up, she said. I have no choice, Katie, said Mojo. You're either born smart or you're not. And I realize today that I'm not. Mojo, that's not how it works, said Katie. Anyone can be smart. You just have to work at it. Psh, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, said Mojo. It's not ridiculous, it's science, said Katie. Neuroscientists studied the brain for years and discovered an incredible secret, that your brain is like a muscle. When you try challenging things, like those hard math problems, you're giving your brain the exercise it needs to get stronger, which makes you smarter. Ooh, is that really true? said Mojo. Of course, said Katie. It's like how when you were a baby, you didn't know how to talk, but you kept trying, exercising your brain, until one day you could. Mojo! Mojo couldn't believe what he was hearing. If your brain was really like a muscle, did that mean anyone could become smarter? Even him? He turned to ask Katie, but just then, she had to be off to her next class. But maybe you can answer Mojo's question. What do you think? Can Mojo become smarter? What about you? Hmm, now that's an interesting question indeed. That's definitely an interesting question and I want you just to hold your thoughts there, but I hope that the video triggered you and you're asking yourself the question so we can discuss it later on or hear some of your feedback. 
Okay, so then this is what we're going to be discussing during the workshop. Uh, this concept of growth mindset basically says that our brains are a muscle that when exercised, it becomes stronger and therefore smarter. We will talk about the science behind the growth mindset and how we can teach our children this concept, as well as practical tips on ways to foster this mindset in our children. So what is your belief about our brains? So I'm gonna read through these statements and uh, you can take notes or just write the, the principle that, or the belief that applies to you. A, your intelligence is something very basic about you that you can't change very much. B, you can learn new things but you can't really change how intelligent you are. C, no matter how much intelligence you have, you can always change it quite a bit. And D, you can always substantially change how intelligent you are. So just see if your current beliefs match any of the statements here. Just think about that, write it down. So mindsets are beliefs and you have a choice. Mindsets are just beliefs, but they are powerful beliefs, but they are something in your mind and you can change your mind. Hopefully by the end of the hour, you will feel more confident to answer the questions that I read previously. and. Let's see if you will believe that Mojo can become smarter or if you believe that you or your child can become smarter. Let's talk about brain plasticity, one of my favorite subjects. I love neuroscience and everything related to the brain. So this is just one of my favorite workshops to teach. Uh, recent advances in neuroscience have shown us that the brain is far more malleable than we ever knew. In fact, before, we used to say that only within the first few years of, uh, of childhood, it was when we had the main, most of the capacity to develop our brain, and it would determine like how we would um like our skills throughout our years our um yeah our life so now this research has shown how connectivity if you see on the picture on the right it shows the connectivity between neurons and this connectivity can change the experience so we can support and improve those connectivities with practice this, these neural networks grow new connections and strengthen existing ones and build insulation that speeds transmission of impulses. These neuroscientific discoveries have shown us that we can increase our neural growth by the actions we take, such as using good strategies, asking questions, practicing and following good nutrition and sleep habits. Like one of the big changes is that before we used to think of the brain just of isolated parts and with every area of the brain with specific functions. And now we know that all these networks like are interconnected and we can create a different, like improve our brain's functions. So what is growth mindset? In a growth mindset, people believe that their most basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. Brains and talent are just a starting point. This view creates a love of learning and a resilience that is essential for great accomplishments. Those who embrace growth mindsets that believe that they can learn more or become smarter if they work hard and persevere have greater success in academics and in life. 
Have you ever encountered someone with a growth mindset? You, I'm sure that you have. And you probably know, you can easily identify these people. They are hardworking, positive individuals who take on challenges and especially they don't give up. And I think we have a lot of those traits that I just mentioned, just because we are very resilient and we just go through our challenges with our children and we never give up. We always, we're always going and giving them a chance to succeed. So this slide shows the two mindsets uh, side by side, and it explains um, like how you can identify or what are the main characteristics of each of them. And so I'm gonna use some of the wording from a leader and expert advisor to businesses. His name is Peter Fisk. And so this is how he explains the differences, differences between the two. So the fixed mindset, you see it is the blue, hamper success and must be avoided in the area where we seek to find achievement. This mindset leads us to avoid failure at all costs in fear of failure. In a fixed mindset, we believe our intelligence is static. This can result in avoiding challenges, giving up easily when faced with obstacles, not giving 100% effort. If we see life through a fixed mindset, we become trapped in a black and white world of success and failure. We take easier classes in school to maintain our identity as a straight A student. We avoid social interactions. We blame others and dodge confrontation. We reject change. We play it safe. I love to read this because First, I thought just about trying and giving up, but this is like a different facet of that. And it's just like avoiding and take it, just the minimum risk and the minimum challenge just to feel that we are not failing. And when we uh, deny ourselves that opportunity to attempt, attempt something new, then we're also denying our possibility to find out our true potential and our children's. The growth mindset is instead is believing that our qualities can be cultivated and leads to different fundamental thoughts and action. This mindset changes the implication of failure from unworthy to opportunity. Failure becomes a minor setback and a chance to learn. I love that. Unlike the fixed mindset, we believe intelligence can be developed, leading us to want to learn. A desire for learning often results in embracing challenges, working through obstacles, valuing effort, learning from criticism, and finding inspiration in the success of mm -hmm. others. If we have a growth mindset, we live in a world of potentials, we embrace challenges, we value efforts role in achievement. We listen to opposing viewpoints. We face our fears. We compromise when necessary. And we take responsibility and embrace change. At the age of three and a half or four, children are able to evaluate themselves for mistakes or when they are criticized. This is also the age where professionals are seeing evidence of a fixed mindset. A collaboration with researchers from the University of Chicago videotaped mother and child interactions for toddlers. They found that the more mothers praised the process and not the outcome, the more children had a growth mindset and a high desire for challenge, even five years later when they were second graders. So as we can see, this process starts very early in the child's life. 
So what does this look like in everyday dialogue? Uh, you should have received some handouts via email. And this is a great exercise that you can use at home. Um, so this is like how a fixed mindset will sound like. You will just think more about what will others think. And you can just easily give up and think that it's just too much to handle. And you just completely avoid the task. So with a growth mindset, even if you know that it's hard, you get more creative and think about the strategies that you can use instead of giving up. You think about the lessons, what are you gonna learn within the process and not necessarily what's gonna be the final outcome. Just like knowing even if you success or if you happen to fail, you have won like knowledge and new resources and you will think that your effort is paying off. So what isn't a growth mindset? Some might praise only the effort and not the outcome. Instead, we should praise the effort that led to the outcome or the progress. But it's not just the effort, but also the strategy. So support your children in finding another strategy. Children need to know that if they're stuck, they don't need to keep working towards accomplishing whatever they have. Um, they don't need to just focus on that effort, but that they can also keep working towards accomplishing whatever they have set out to do and just become creative. Protecting your child from failure by focusing on the child's ability, that is, is in growth mindset. Instead, it's recommended that we react to the child's failure as though it is something that they can learn from. For instance, we could ask, what is this experience teaching us? Where should we or where can we go next? or how can we learn this better? And there are many examples that we see in real life and usually like from um, important people in our communities. And one case that is very well known is the case of Steve Jobs. He was initially let go from Apple, but he, even if he was disappointed at some point, he didn't let that experience to define who he was and how, what he was gonna do with his life. Uh, he learned from the experience and he created more companies uh, before he returned to Apple and made what we know Apple is right now. Um, his failure gave him motivation to keep moving forward instead of having him just give up. So this is a brief illustration of what the process of developing a growth mindset looks like, or like the mind, just the mindset per se, like just thinking that we can get smarter and just knowing that we have a purpose of learning what our goal is and what are the efforts that we need to make so we can become stronger and spending more time and working harder if necessary is gonna lead us to um, have higher achievements. And we have, we're gonna talk now about the power of yet. And this is another concept that is very easy to implement because we, we can only anytime that we hear our children just saying a negative uh, statement such as I can't do this we can just teach them to say instead I can't do this yet so that opens the possibilities to achieving 
that goal to learning that new skill, to improving some like social skills or academic um, skills. So this doesn't work yet. Lillian, um, yes. There's a question about the praising effort. Can you answer that question, or would you rather have it come at the end? Um, yeah, that's fine. Can you read it for me? I can see that. Awesome. So the question is, can you explain again how praising effort is not a growth mindset? I have always heard to praise the effort, not the outcome. Um, let's go back to that slide really quick. Thanks, Lillian. Yeah, of course. So we should praise the effort that led to the outcome or the progress. Maybe did I say something different? So, so what we acknowledge is praising yeah. the effort is a part of growth mindset or is not. Yes, praising the effort is because we are acknowledging that as growth too, as a learning experience. And even if at the end we don't accomplish the goal, there has been still some growth. I hope that that makes sense. So it would be um, disappointing and uh, detrimental for the child after making a big effort that then we're just going to say, just like, you know, that didn't, that doesn't matter because you didn't achieve the goal. So yes, it is. Sorry, maybe the way I said it, it was confusing. So is does that answer your question? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Thank you for answering that. This is Jennifer. I'm the one that asked the question. Um, I, you did a great job explaining it the second time. I think the first time I was just taken back by just reading the slide that what isn't a growth mindset um, is not to praise the effort, but how you explain it the second time is yes, you praise the effort and it's okay if the outcome was not successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we so have to you. acknowledge all that, that effort, especially in our children and ourselves, because sometimes we are the worst judges. <laughs> so thanks for asking the question, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Okay, let's go to... Okay, so then next I'm gonna play a video that is gonna explain more about this power of yet. And it is a short clip. Today, I want to tell you about the power of yet. I learned of a high school in Chicago where students had to pass 84 units to graduate. And if they didn't pass, they got the grade not yet. I thought, isn't that wonderful? Because if you fail, you're nowhere. But if you get the grade not yet, you're on a learning curve. Not yet gave them a path into the future. And not yet also helped me understand a critical experience early in my career. To figure out how kids cope with challenge, I gave 10-year-olds some problems that were a little too difficult for them. Some of them reacted in a shockingly positive way. They said things like, I love a challenge, or I was hoping this would be informative. <laughs> They understood that their abilities could grow through their hard work. They had what I call a growth mindset. But other children, for them, it was tragic, catastrophic. From their more fixed mindset perspective, their core intelligence had been tested and devastated. Instead of the power of yet, they were gripped 
by the tyranny of now. So what did they do next? In one study, after a failure on a test, they said they'd cheat next time instead of study more. In another study, they found someone who did worse than they did so they could feel better. And in many studies, we found they run from difficulty. Let's look at how that looks in the brain. Mosher and his colleagues measured from the brain as kids encountered errors. Processing the error shows up in red. If you look at the fixed mindset brain on the left, nothing is happening. But if you look at the growth mindset brain on the right, it's on fire with yet. They're processing the error deeply, learning from it, and correcting, correcting it. So how are we raising our kids? Are we raising them for now or for yet? Are they focused on the next A or test score instead of dreaming big, instead of thinking about what they want to be and how they want to contribute to society? And if they are too focused on A's and test scores, are they going to carry this with them into the future? Maybe because many employers are coming to me and saying, we've already created a generation of young workers who can't get through the day without an award. So what can we do? How can we build that bridge to yet? First, we can praise wisely. Our research shows that when we praise kids for the process they engage in, their hard work, their strategies, their focus, their perseverance, they learn that challenge seeking, they learn that resilience. Praising talent, praising intelligence makes them vulnerable. There are other ways of rewarding yet. We teamed up with game scientists at the University of Washington to create a math game, brain points. The typical math game rewards right answers right now, but not brain points. We rewarded process and the learning curve, so effort, strategy, and progress. The brain points game created more sustained learning and greater perseverance than the standard game. And just the words yet and not yet after a student has a setback where finding creates greater confidence and greater persistence. We also, okay. Yeah, it was just that part. And this reminded me now, and I wish that I had remembered this, ex not experience, but this reading that I, did once and I remember I was flying and I don't remember where I was going from. I'm sorry, let me see if I can move from this. Okay. Um I was flying somewhere and and the magazine that they have in the airplane, they had this specific article that was talking about how pilots um you know, flying the airplanes that they are usually consistently correcting the course. Like it's not that they just go as uh, straight up we think that they are, that they go from point A to point B and they have just a route maybe as we see within a road to, you know, just a regular road where you can see more like your stops and where you're going, the road ahead and everything, but they're consistently rerouting and that they, that's part of their journey and part of the way that they have, the skills that they have to, to master. And I associated that with life, that if we um, just get hung up with this uh, setbacks and when we have to, reconsider our goal and just reroute again 
you know, we sometimes just like get disappointed and I'm sure that we all have an experience where we have just given up because we haven't endured through that rerouting and reconsidering and setting new goals and maybe taking smaller steps and feeling just that we are like staying behind instead of just acknowledging those little steps and the progress that we make. So then how are we gonna teach a growth mindset at home? So there are many ways you can foster a growth mindset at home. And these are some ideas. So this is a book, Bubblegum Brain Night, and it's an activity and idea book. And it's also um, a story and it's, it teaches children and also adults can teach from this a valuable lesson of becoming uh, better every time. And it will show that like, different possibilities we can also like have visual reminders throughout our home and our office just to remember now what we learned about the brain and what it means to have a growth mindset so we can remember that challenges help us to grow that the effort and attitude determines our abilities as well and then also the opposite what we want to avoid if we catch ourselves thinking that I'm just not good at this and I should just give up and that I have limited abilities or that our children have limited abilities, then we're gonna feel that we're stuck and we're not gonna continue to grow as easily as when we do have uh, or embrace that growth mindset. These are mother visual. Uh, you can also print this and you should have them in the handouts. You also have a link to the video that we just watched if you want to watch that again. So all things are difficult before they are easy. And, you know, one of the uh, experiences that are always mentioned in this type of topics is just learning to ride a bike. We all tried, we fell we felt that we wanted to give up. And once we learned that skill, it just became easy. The same as when we're learning to drive at first, like we have just to remember every single thing we're gonna do, like your directionals and the brake and the gas. And, and then later on, we're just going from point A to B and C and without even thinking what we have to do. So then, it's a good reminder. I love always this one. Everything, all things are difficult before they are easy. Um, these are 15 growth mindset questions to ask. And you can you know, use it for yourself when you feel stuck, when you feel that you're getting a little bit pessimistic about your skills and what you can achieve or when you feel that you have failed that, or that we have missed a goal. So then we can ask like, these questions to help us re, reroute and go again through the growth mindset instead of staying stuck in the fixed mindset. So one that I like is how will you challenge yourself today? So it's, you know, from, the beginning and if you have like a morning routine and where you do some like reading, uh, yoga, so you can be in the best mood possible, then also remember to ask this question so you can challenge yourself with something new to learn with a different way to do something that you are already doing day in and day out. So you can challenge sometimes like even to just like stimulate both sides of the brain. Uh, you can do just simple things like maybe if you brush your teeth with your right hand, then you can use your left hand and that's gonna be, I think it, it'd be a, a way to integrate a little bit of this growth mindset, just like seeing there is other possibility to what we've known. 
And these are some suggestions for uh, recommendations for uh, books about a growth mindset. You will have this on your handouts as well. And you can, it has the boxes so you can mark the ones that you have already read with your children for family movie nights. You can also choose some like to just watch every week or whenever you have some family time. Podcasts now, they are very popular. And when we are commuting, I love just my commuting time and live in North Ogden. And right now we're back to working virtually, but I love my commuting time because it just gives me that time where, you know, I still have to do that, but then I am stimulating my brain also with good content. So problem solving with your kids. So there will be organic problem solving opportunities that happen with your kids. So there's not always, you don't always have to just set up a time to talk about this with your children as we have done it now and with you, but it's just like being mindful of every opportunity that we have when they are, maybe they come back from school and we ask them how school went and they're disappointed, disappointed for anything they feel they felt at. So then that's a good opportunity to teach them. And so it'd be like a hands-on and not just theory, but they're gonna see how the principles that you have been teaching them can be applied. And I just love this clip that I found for the next slide, like as an intro for next slide content. And it's just parents can learn from their kids too. Uh, we think that we're here just to teach them and guide them. And yes, to some extent, but we always learn from them as well. And I just loved this little guy. I hope you love it too. I think I know you will. And it's not a YouTube video, so, okay, hold on. It's... I'm too big. Can you do it, Dada? What would you say? You can do it. Well, I can't, I'm too big. You can do it. You, you can do it right here. Right here? Yeah. <laughs> okay, come to me. Come to me. No, it's too, it's, it's too much. I can't do it. You, you can do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Come on, come on. Come on. Let's look down together. I wish I could see your faces, but I just can't stop smiling every time I see this little kid. <clears throat> and this heart just uh, some quotes, let me, uh, I don't know how to go back now, maybe, okay, so then more like quotes shared by children and some youth. I was really frustrated by my game, but I knew I could do it if I got going. This is from Caitlin, age 19. Phew, I didn't know I could do that. I was really scared. It was really scary, but I'm glad I did it. Can I try again? Doesn't that sound familiar? Sometimes like, well, we're going uh, with a new experience and we just feel like, oh, I'm not going to be able to do it. And then just like going through a roller coaster and then yeah, you're scared and everything, but you want to go again or before it used to be that way, not anymore. <laughs> uh, I'm scared. What if all the kids are smarter than me? What if they don't like me? The, these are things that we worry about when we're transitioning from elementary to middle school and also to college or 
with a new, very new job. So even as adults. So after two days in the new class, this is what Parker said. I love my new class and I'm making friends. I'm not scared anymore. You made me a wrong turn, mom. That's okay. You made it wrong turn, mom. That's okay. Try again. So I'm sure that you have one that you remember with any of your children. So if you do and you want to share it in the chat, that'd be wonderful. I'd love to read it once I stop sharing. And this is the end of the presentation. And I really want to, we have a few minutes. So if we can have a short discussion, that would be wonderful i'd like you to and i'm gonna go back to that slide to remember those questions after the first video but let me show you here so you remember just a reminder that you can contact us if you want to learn more about how you can implement this concept of growth mindset with your children or if you need any other type of assistance that we are here to assist you at the Utah Parent Center. So you can apply what you've learned to your specific situation or just answer any other questions you may have about a different um, subject related to your children with disabilities. And I'm gonna go back to this one. So maybe I'd like, I'm gonna open now the chat. I'd like to hear for, from someone if there was a change in your belief from when, you know, before the workshop and now after going through the content has your beliefs change at all? Kathleen, you haven't received the handouts. Yes, I can send the handouts again tomorrow. Um, just to make sure, did someone else, is anybody else um, that didn't receive? I'll just re resend it to everyone. Yeah, there was another person who said that the handouts that you were showing was not what was received in an email. So can you um, double check to make sure what was shown was in? Yes, I will. Um, what was shown here? Um, and yeah, if you could just send them out to everybody who attended, that would be great. I noticed that it had a different format, but I'm going to double check just to make sure that I didn't miss any. Awesome. Thank you. These were awesome. Do we have another question? Or is anyone who wants to practice their growth mindset and just open up the mic, maybe even the camera and just share what's your new belief or just an insight, an insight, an important insight, something that you really liked and you think that is going to be helpful with your family. So, well, William, I'm going to share something um, about what we learned with our son. He had complex disabilities, um, intellectual disabilities and medical needs, and he would just go for it. And in the middle of when he was learning a new activity, he would sometimes then start to hesitate and look around with, wait, what am I doing? Like then he would start to hesitate and then be in the moment of, okay, can I do this? And then it was the power of, sure, yeah, you can. And then he would keep going forward as it was that power of yet in the moment. Um, he was a very physically active kid, young man, um, who enjoyed skiing and mountain climbing and um, anything active. And it was sometimes in the middle of going up a ski lift where he would look at his instructor like, oh, what have I done? And they'd be like, oh, you got this. So sometimes we get into the middle of something and it's, 
wait, why am I going up this ladder? Which is also when I hesitate, when I'm in the middle of it, I jump and then go, why am I going into the middle of things? Um, but he taught us the power of just going for it and saying, yeah, I got this. So I think this is a really powerful thing for all, all kids. It's a really cool thing when you say, we're not gonna limit ourselves or our kids. I love this mindset, keeping it in growth. Thank you for sharing these things. Yes, thank you for sharing, sharing that experience, that story in Julia. I think someone else was gonna say something before Julia started talking. Maybe not. Well, I just wanted to say, and this came to my mind now when Julia shared, because even when we are working towards a goal that we have chosen and we've done it because we really want it, that there may come a time when we, as Julia said, is that we forget why, our why behind it. And also, I mean, like when it's related like to my career and, you know, I always think, okay, remember to do it as you did it in the beginning and how you felt and because you feel that there's a purpose behind it. And I think that we should, should learn just to add like play to anything we, we do and then remember just to do things sometimes just for the fun of it and not just because we are so tied up to, to that goal and outcome, but just because we are ready to just take on whatever is necessary to just enjoy that, that process. Well, if you have additional questions, any remarks? I was just going to comment that um, that first slide that showed a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. I feel like as I've aged, I've become more fixed mindset <laughs> and don't want challenges. And so it was really an eye opener. Like I need to go back to a growth mindset, especially that I'm trying to teach that with my son um, who has um, severe learning disabilities. And we always we praise the effort and um, I, I need to circle back to the not yet too with his actually his educators and remind them that they need to to also praise the effort as we do at home and not only concentrate on the grades. Yeah, yeah. When I was talking about that, I was thinking, that that'd be great if that could be implemented more within the school system, but you know, still it's, I think there's still a lot of change that it can, it can, we can make in the school system. So it's more of a reflection and support for our children in this way, instead of just quantifying progress the way that is usually done with a grade. And I see Shanna Wheeler says, thank you, this is hopeful. My child is 43 years old and hence I am an older parent. I can see that I need to praise more of her effort in dealing with the complexities of life that she faces. Thanks for sharing, Shanna. Yes, I know, I always say my son is 10, and yes, there's been a learning curve, but I like to remind myself, you know, I need to give him the opportunity to try at least. And, and then if he fails, okay, we can try something else. And it's not always easy, especially when it comes to academics. And I feel like he's so behind and with like he's severely delayed as well. So yeah, it, it can be challenging. And regarding what you said, Jennifer, I also thought that, you know, yes, when we're younger, when we're children, we don't think 
about. We don't have this concept as rooted as we do right now. And that's why like when we're learning to walk, it's like we fall so many times. And you know, sometimes children cry, but sometimes they just take off again and try again. And it doesn't matter how many times we fall, we persist. And it's like yeah, little by little we if we are not mindful of cultivating this mindset, then we can just get more fixed mindset. So it's a good reminder. Let's print out some of these handouts that you received or that I'm gonna send you. And thanks again for being tonight here, taking this time to listen to this class and remember that we are here at the Utah Parent Center, that we are parents helping parents. We know what you're going through. We really relate to your experience and we are happy, willing, and eager to assist you. Thank you. Do you have anything to add, Julia? Um, I'm, I'm wondering if Mandy or Kathy does as our network leaders. I'm also wondering, Lilium, if you have the poll to launch. Oh, yes. Thank, Thank you. you, Julia. Thank you. <laughs> Let's see. OK, perfect. Mandy, do you want to tell them about what's happening next month for Salt Lake? Or I can as well. It's like Mandy may have stepped away for a moment. I'm just trying to bring it up right now, sorry. So next month, our meeting is about um, person-centered support planning. So this is something that is frequently, well, is done for people who are in DSPD services, but it's also something that families can do um, prior to being in DSPD services to help plan out goals and um, ways that you want your loved one to meet their goals. Um, so we're gonna, going to be going over that um, and we'd love to have everyone attend that workshop as well. Thank you. Thank you.